Hey everyone, so I wanted to talk today a little bit about um, what kind of problems can we solve with data science. Um, you know, so said simply, this, um, this whole data science thing, what we're doing is we're just applying science to data. It's that easy. So, um, you know, let's say we were chemists, right? If we were chemists, what we would do is we would be manipulating chemicals. Now, we wouldn't just throw everything in a, in a test tube and see what would happen, although that could be interesting. Um, we would probably have some idea, some hypothesis, um, something that we want to test or do, and we would manipulate chemicals to uh, make that happen. So it's the same thing with data science. Data science starts with a hypothesis. So what's a good hypothesis? Well, let me give you an example. Um, let's say that we were hired by our city to um, predict pollution. So a good hypothesis could be that um, pollution uh, could be uh, relate, predicted by or is related to um, things like traffic count and weather information. So we can create a hypothesis that, that's um, a guess. And it's an educated guess, but it's a guess. We say um, pollution is related to traffic and weather. Okay. So we're going to work within our medium, which is data, to uh, see if we can build some evidence for this. So what kind of data would we need? Um, well, that's a good question. Uh, probably we would need data related to traffic and to weather, um, probably also to pollution. Uh, how would we get that data? Well, it depends. Um, there's a lot of sources, and one of the cool creative jobs that a data scientist has is to look through those variety of sources and see what we can find, see what's useful. Um, something that we want to be really careful of when we're, when we're doing this kind of work is biases in the data. So um, hidden landmines that can trip up our analysis later on. We'll talk more about biases later, um, but let me give you a for instance. What if our um, pollution data was only captured during the summer? Well, we already suspect that weather could be predictive of pollution. So if that's true, then a summer-only collection could really introduce a bias towards weather, or certain types of weather. So biases in data are something we have to watch out for. All right, so we have a hypothesis. That's step one. And we have some data. That's step two. Now what? Well. The next thing we're going to do is probably create some model and this model is going to help us explore the relationship between pollution and uh, traffic and weather. So. In our hypothesis, we said that there's some relationship. We don't necessarily know what it is, um, but we're going to try and uh, determine that. And so what we can do is, um, first of all, let's kind of more rigorously define that. So what we're saying when we say there's a relationship is we're saying that there's some natural process. I mean, as natural as you know, cars driving down roads can be, but it's all governed by nature. Um, so there's some natural process. And it's a black box. We don't know what's going on in here. And into this black box goes traffic. And weather. 
and out comes pollution. So that's kind of what, that's what our guess is. Okay, so um, what, what do we do when we create a model then? What we do is we try to create some mathematical box that is going to approximate as close as it can the natural process. Well, okay, so why would we do that though? There's two reasons we would do that. Um, the first reason we would do that is information. And when I say information, what I mean is uh, we want to extract some information from this approximated model that helps us understand the relationship between these things that are going in, traffic and weather, and pollution, which is coming out. And by the way, before we get too far ahead, this would be a good time to give you some uh, statistical lingo. Uh, these things that are going into our model are oftentimes in statistics called, um, <clears throat> excuse me, independent variables. And now, on the outside, what comes out, pollution, this is often called a dependent variable. Why is it dependent? Well, so pollution is dependent on the other variables that are traffic and weather, which are independent of anything else. At least so we believe in our simple little world. Um, I'm calling this out so uh, just so if I use these terms later on, uh, you're not tripped up and not surprised. Sometimes also the dependent variable is uh, called an endogenous variable, whereas uh, traffic and weather are called an exogenous variable. Right, okay. So um, the other thing that we might want to do is uh, predict. All right, so if we want to, so what would we want to predict? Well, there's a couple of reasons why. Um, the most straightforward is just, uh, let's say we've created this model over here, and this model might work really good to approximate na nature. Okay, great. How does that help us? Well, one, may, one way it might help us is if this model is good at predicting, then we could be able to use future instances of traffic and weather to predict future instances of pollution, and that could be useful. So um, once we have a model, and if it works pretty good, then the next thing we would do is, um, and this is going to be step four of our data science life cycle, if you're following along, we're going to want to create some kind of data product. So what's a data product? Well, a data product is um, its going to be whatever we build out of the data. It's the product of our work. It's how we show or convince or um, help the people that hired us. And so it could be a couple of things. Um, the first thing it could be is just information. So maybe we use the um, information that we learned. Um, and we use and we build some visualization. Um, this is visualization. I can spell. Um, so this is the the easiest of the data products that we could possibly build. Another one that's maybe a little bit um, more interesting would be an experiment. I know an experiment doesn't really sound like a product, but um, this is an important thing to note. Um, remember before we were talking about uh, information in, in a model, right? And so we said that we wanted to understand the relationship between those independent variables and the dependent variable. So like um, the relationship between traffic and water on one side and then, and then how those things um, play into uh, pollution. So we can probably show with our model that there, there may or may not be some correlation between the independent and dependent variables. But what we can't do, for a variety of reasons, is prove causation. There's a big difference there. So like any, like any stats class you've probably already had, I'm going to tell you this right now. Correlation 
does not equal causation. Okay, fine. So, but how do you prove causation? Well, to really determine or prove causation, you need an experiment. And sometimes that's the best we can do with a data product is the creation of an experiment. Now, maybe that experiment happens electronically. Maybe it's an A-B test that we do, um, you know, with users coming to a website. Or maybe it's a real-life experiment where we try different treatments and see which ones are the most effective. Regardless, experiments are data products that we could create. Um, now, lastly, the last kind of data product, and probably the most fun, is just a predictive model. And a predictive model does exactly what you'd think it would do. It predicts. It predicts some value in the future. So going back to our um, example of uh, pollution, we would probably make a predictive model that would predict how much pollution could occur in the future given all of the things that we um, determined were important in predicting uh, pollution. So uh, these kind of models are a lot of fun to implement. And we're going to talk a lot about this in this class. Um, so that's the data science life cycle. And just to summarize one more time for you, it starts with the hypothesis. Then we need some data. We're going to model that data. And then lastly, we're going to create some data product. It's a finding. It's really as simple as that, sometimes. Now, that's not to say that a lot of times as we're going through this process, uh, it doesn't always just go like this. A lot of times we will create a hypothesis, and then we'll find some data, and then we'll model. But maybe the model that we have um, isn't so good. Maybe we've found out that there's um, a variable or some information that, that we don't need. Or maybe there's um, some variables or information that we didn't include. So we may need to alter the data. And it could be that once we create an experiment um, in, as a data product, maybe we need to go back and create another model. So my point is, is that all of this can be very iterative. But in general, these are the four steps that we go through in any process. All right, so in my next uh, video, I'm going to be talking to you about uh, the different types of models that we can build. Um, and so we finally get to talk machine learning. I'm looking forward to it. See you soon.